Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things here today to talk a little bit about putting some of these innovations I'm starting to see together. And the innovation I'm talking about now is how students are exposed to a program called Inventor, probably down as early as middle school, right? Inventor, which is a basically a 3D modeling, 3D parametric modeling program. Um, and I'm just going to keep it in the same phrase with also with the idea of SketchUp, which everyone knows is Mr. 13 Things or Silent the Goods' favorite um, 3D drafting, probably for a number of reasons, but basically that it's very open to Ruby, right? So we're going to see here that we start talking about Ruby as a programming language. But in, in the, the essence of this is that when students start to do 3D work, they are doing linear algebra. Okay, and when they start jumping into the software without realizing that they're doing some math and how simple and straightforward the math is, they're going to start getting down a road there that thinks that it's completely okay to skip to not only the math, but the coding. And we're living in a day where I think it was just yesterday a place called code.org came out. Go out and check out their video and their site. Pretty incredible uh, push to get kids coding. So that's the, the crux of this. And what we're going to talk about in this specific video is the concept of how you actually do an extrude. How you actually do an extrude mathematically. Uh, using essentially linear algebra or if you want matrices and the like. So we're going to try to go through this using, we're using SmoothDraw and Camtasia, though Cam Studio will do it just fine. I'm going to try to keep my colors consistent as we start talking about three dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly sketch up a set of coordinates. And if you realize this is a habit, doesn't take too long to get that you're going to think about something here in the X. And I'm going over here and something with a direction Y and something with a direction Z. So, so we're in a 3D coordinate system. And in Inventor, very quickly, you'll start to see that there's also uh, time comes into it pretty much. So we're going to go ahead and just put in a triangle here in the X um, y, Z, um, you know, a pretty simple triangle. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it put that one in yellow, I guess. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to draft a simple triangle. But that triangle is not going to be flat to one of our standard planes. It's going to be just a little bit different. So I'm going to draft a triangle that's there to that point and to here. And I'm going to kind of try to sketch that in, if you would. So that's a triangle. And the triangle, as we start thinking about the points that it, it, it represents, the points of the triangle, and I'm going to now are, we'll call that vertice 0, vertice 1, and vertice 2. We could have gone 1, 2, 3, but 0, 1, and 2. And we're going to have 0, point 0 is equal to, I'll start with the coordinate system or the coordinate notation you might be used to, but very quickly showing students how mathematically we do things in stacks, each point being a vector, if you would. And so point zero is at zero in the x, zero in the y, and one in the z. Point one is at one in the x, zero in the y, and 0 in the z. Point 2 is at 0 in the x, 1 in the y, and 0 in the z. So this effectively describes this shape here. If you know that these are the points, and now we're going to go to the, the edges. The edges are going to be from P 0 to P1, from P1 to P2, 
and from basically P2 to back to P0. There's our edges. And then our faces are going to be a face described basically by, we'll go this edge 0, edge 1, edge 2. Is going to be described as E0. E1 and E2. In other words, the polygon face 0 is equal to the face described by going in a positive direction from E0, E1 to E2. Now face 0, the back, would be effectively the reverse side of that, which would be going from E0 to E2 to E1. 0 to E2 to E1. And we're not going to actually use that, but the concept of how faces descri are described in terms of directions along edges, etc., becomes a little important later as you decide which way you're going to kind of extrude out from this. All right, so learning how this is often written out or coded. We're going to do this right now. We're going to do this mathematics by standard linear algebra. So we're going to be dealing not with quaternion math, but with 3D, three-dimensional system. And what these points are then described as, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to now colorize it. These, these faces or the points can be described as a series of column vectors, right? And there's going to be three of them. And those column vectors are going to have x, y, z, and then just a, call it a one chaser if you would, this being the state of Wisconsin, or just a one filler, a scale factor. And so we're going to go ahead and draft those up. Now I'm going to kind of go to my colorized thing, which I intended earlier. So this one, obviously point zero has zero in the x, and point one has one in the x, and point two has zero in the x. And then they've got some y values, and I'm only doing it this way because it's of the issues of using the color sucker, as I'm doing here. And we now have, we have 0 in the x, or 0 in the y, 0 in the y, and 1 in the y. And finally, we have the third coordinate is 1, 0, 0. In other words, as we go into here, and you can see there's probably a, be a much better way to switch colors, and I'll try to figure what that is. So this is, the first point has 1 in the Z, and then 0 in the Z, and 0 in the Z for the third one. So these points are described, I'm going to put it up here back in yellow. Um, these points are described best and most usefully, perhaps when you're shifting kids in the tech ed, starting letting them realize that all that calculation that you're doing in the computer is being done with matrix algebra and the fact that when you do lots of mathematics and computer math you are thinking about vectors as stacks so this is actually point zero and point one and point two i'm going to skip kind of the notations of the edges and faces but you can understand that as you start moving these things around or shifting around basically the description of E0, edge 0, edge 1, or edge 2 is not going to change from this. You may, as long as you shift around P0, P1, and P2, this is going to follow along in space, as are the faces. So really the crux of what you're going to be doing is you're going to be manipulating, right? So that's what you're going to be manipulating. Or scaling or whatever you're going to do. So this is a basic a set of column vectors set of column vectors, right, with a one chaser each, with a one chaser. And these are what? These are points. These are your points. So as you get more complex faces, right, you just have a greater number of stacks. This, in effect, is what we'll be doing and I'm going to kind of keep it on this general bit. Now that you have this, this is the set of steps to essentially do an extrude. I'm going to put it over here on the side to extrude. 
what do you do? One, you calculate the normal. Calculate the normal unit vector. And you're going to end up doing that by taking the cross product of any two vectors in the plane. Two, you scale that, scale that normal to your extrude distance. So the first thing you do is you calculate the normal. The second one is you scale that normal to your extrude distance. And then three, you just add that vector to each point. In effect, what you've done is you've taken, you've kind of shifted these thing, this thing out. It's going to be difficult for me to do it here. But you've just kind of shift this, this thing out in, at a normal direction. I'm going to see if I can kind of do it in a normal direction. You've got another one of these things out here in space then. And you then can then up connect up your new edges to kind of, you're going to go from one, two, three edges to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine edges. So you're going to go ahead and just add edges. And in the end, you can then add faces as well. But in essentially to, to understand the mathematics of dealing with the points and the basic concepts of extrude, revolve, rotate. This is how it's done. You are going back to base points based in a basic coordinate system. And I would think that you, as you start dealing with the quote unquote part system, you're going to be realizing that every part has its own coordinate system. And then those coordinate systems are there put together in assemblies. So what do you do? You stick your points in column vectors and add a one chaser. Then you calculate, calculate the normal unit vector, and that's going to be done in the next video by calculating the cross product of any two vectors in the plane. And obviously, any two of these edges will suffice. And then you add that vector to each point, and then you have your basically your 3D shape now defined by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 edges, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 faces. And you have effectively that prism. So that's the steps. Figure out where your points are, put them in 3D, calculate the normal unit vector to the face, Scale that normal to your, expo to your extrude distance, and you'll see that there's a positive and a negative direction. Add that vector to each point, and you are done. This can be done by hand, relatively simply, and with a basic calculator for sure. In that lies why, I believe, you start using a TI-83 calculator or something like it in around middle school, which would be sixth grade. So that by seventh or eighth grade, I'm talking about an eighth grade class here, these basic skills that students have been using since fourth grade when they've been gaming or third or second or first or kindergarten can be abstracted. If you're abstracting 3D space into a computer, you can abstract the math as well. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for the next video. Get your calculators out.